Welcome everybody. Today we are going to be talking about setting up and using a sub-UV particle system in Niagara. Um, what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to create an image that is going to be used as our sub-UV image and when we create this we are going to use GIMP to do it. And uh, here you see me uh, making sure there's a transparency layer. I'm just going to set up some basic um, uh, grid uh, so that we can see it uh, and easily draw our images as you will see me do here. <clears throat> then you will see I create a layer and I just start creating some random uh, images within here that are going to be used later in our sub-UV particle system. What you see me doing is just creating all of the different images uh, that I'm going to use. So the idea is that you would be able to go ahead and create whatever images you would like to use or find a sprite sheet somewhere that's royalty free, um, whatever you need to do. But um, once we get this created here, you see me just going over a whole bunch of them just to speed things along. But you will see how this works in uh, our sub UV particle system later. So here I'm gonna save it off as a PNG. So I go ahead and save this. I just call it symbols. Export that out. And once we have this image exported, uh, you see it's just a the white on a transparent background. Drag the image in to import it. Yep, so there you see it, and um, now, yep, so now that's imported just fine. So we have our image. Now what we're going to do is create a material to use the image. So this material will be used in our particle system, and you will see that shortly. <clears throat> yep, so we create a material. Now, upcoming here, I'm going to just copy in the material setup. You can recreate it yourself. So now that we have this, I'm going to hook up the this part to the emissive color and also the, uh, the base color. And here... Um, I'm going to hook this up to the opacity. Right now it's grayed out because the material hasn't been set to translucent. So we'll update that. And here we're going to set our texture sample to the image that we created earlier. So I drag this in here. Very good. So now we have a material that's capable of rendering all of the different symbols in our uh, PNG that we created earlier. So once this compiles you can see because of the way the UV is mapping it's mapping the entire texture onto each face of the cube. Which is not taking advantage of the sub UV yet. But it will be. Okay so now I am going to create my Niagara uh, emitter and uh, particle system but you see I don't have Niagara configured on this project so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to configure that okay it's under FX and you see Niagara and Niagara extras just enable both of these and then you're gonna have to restart the Unreal Engine create now you see FX so we're going to do a Niagara emitter. 
I just picked the fountain uh, as our test and I don't bother renaming it. You can name it whatever you want. And then I pull up the editor for the emitter. So here you see this is kind of the base emitter. So the first thing we're going to do is set the sprite rendering material to our um, material that we created using our PNG. So it's going to compile here. That's grayed out until it compiles. Okay, so now what you see is each of the particles is rendering as the entire image. So you're seeing all of our symbols, um, which is not exactly what we were wanting to do. So here I'm looking around for some option to slow down the uh, slow down the simulation so that you can see it a little bit better, but Instead, what I'm going to do is just adjust <clears throat> some of the uh, velocities and the gravity. Now, what you see here is the sub UV is not set. We have one by one. And here you see we have four across and four down. So we have a total of 16 different items. So what you do is you set here four by four. And now you see that it's just displaying one of our symbols and that's good so it's not rendering the entire image now but it is only displaying the very first symbol in our set of symbols and the reason is that we're not rotating or setting the sub uv index anywhere Okay, so now we can see that, you know, it's all just the same individual symbol, which is the very first one. What we need to do is get it to randomly select one of the 16 images. And the way we're going to do that is um, we're going to do set specific parameters. Here you see me doing a particle update, and I wanted to do this just to show you. Um, so we're going to set the sub UV uh, image index. And um, when we look at this, what this is controlling is the sub particle sub UV settings right here, right? So that sub UV image index, this is going to control which one of the symbols we select. So right now it just defaults to zero. We are going to have it choose a random value between 0 and 15. So that's the index of the image that we want to choose uh, using our sub UVs. So here are uniform random and right now it's still do doing 0 to 1. So now I'm going to update it to 15. And now what you see is it's definitely selecting things, but you also see that it's changing the image as the particle updates. So what I'm going to do is move that from the particle update to particle spawn. And now you see it selects an image, renders it, and it stays that way throughout the life of the particle. So this is what we wanted. The next thing I'm going to do is... I'm going to set a specific parameter and we're going to set the particle uh, dynamic parameter. And by doing this, we're going to drive. You see, I take my input dynamic parameter and I multiply it by the color. And by doing that, I can drive the brightness of the emissive uh, portion. And uh, let me just show you here. So instead of a value of one, I'll change it to 100, and you see now we're emitting a much brighter color, uh, a very bright, glowing white. So this is what we're going to do. What I'm going to show you, though, is uh, rather than setting it at, at the beginning, I'm actually going to update it over the life cycle of the particle, and we're going to start out very bright, and then we are going to uh, go down to zero. So I'm going to do that by using a curve. And here I create a curve. 
uh, you press this little curve button in, in here and it allows you to edit the curve in the curve editor below. So what I'm going to do is I'm only using the uh, R value, the very first value. You can It's a, R or a vector 4. So I'm just using the R of the vector 4 to drive that brightness. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the time at time 0, um, the at time 0, I'm going to set the brightness very high. And then at time 1, I'm going to set it to 0. So here you see I'm just dragging this up. And so when the particle first spawns, is very bright. And then over its life cycle, so from 0 to 1 is the, the lifetime, um, at the value of 1, then it's going to go to a brightness of 0. So effectively fading it out. Alrighty. You could also play with the alpha here if you wanted to. You know, there's a million things you could do here, but I'm just trying to give you the basics. Uh, here I'm just adjusting the lifetime of the particles a bit. Just so you can see the change from uh, very bright to not very bright. All right, looks pretty good. All right, so let's see. The only other thing that we haven't done, so we've driven the brightness, we've gotten the sub-UV working. Now what we need to do is we can update the color. So one of the first things I do is just add in a color node. And then I remembered on the initialized particle, you can set the color. So I just go ahead and delete that color thing and I'm going to set the uh, set the color right here so if I change it to red now my particles are red fantastic um, you could also pass this in as a parameter you could change it over the lifetime of the particle very much like I did with the the brightness value using a curve um, I'll let that be something you can work on yourself all right and uh, here I'm just going through a few more things. Um, the, the next part, I'm going to take the Niagara system. We're just going to create a very basic actor. I'm going to stick the particle system in there and then put it in our world. Just so you see that. Yep. So I add a Niagara system as a component to our actor. I, I right click on our emitter, create the system, and assign it to our uh, assign it to our component inside of our actor. And then the last thing is I drag our actor into the world. So there you have it. That is a uh, sub UV using Niagara, and I'm also showing you how to uh, uh, drive some emissive uh, brightness, changing the color. And just creating your own, uh, creating your own symbol thing. So this is a really neat effect. You can use it for, you know, all sorts of things, right? Anything you can do with a particle system, magic spells, whatever, uh, whatever you're interested in. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like more, please subscribe. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.